morning. Last week I shared about Zacharias in Luke chapter 1, kind of the very start of the Advent story, um, where he was met by an angel in the temple and told that his wife Elizabeth was going to have a son who would turn out to be John the Baptist, who would um, prepare the way for Jesus. Just stripped directly after that story in Luke chapter 1, there's another similar story of an angel visiting someone to tell them that they're going to have a son. And it's the angel Gabriel this time visiting Mary. I just want to read that, that beginning of that interaction. In verse 26 it says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favoured woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, How can this be? I am a virgin. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby will be born and will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month, for the word of God will never fail. Verse 38, Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said come, uh, said about me come true. Then the angel left her. There's a lot of similarities between this, this story and, and, and Zacharias's, but there's also some big differences. And I think there's something really important to learn from Mary. Um, because Zacharias kind of failed in, in, in the news he received. He doubted God and he was... He felt the consequences of that. His, his speech was taken away from him until he named his son John nine months later. But Mary, she didn't have that same kind of doubt. But it's ironic, really, because because Zacharias was, was a priest. He was a religious man. He'd spent years studying and serving God. and He was the one who should have, have responded better to this news. He was the one who should have believed it. But Mary here, and this is the lesson we learned from Mary, Mary was probably... A young teenager, probably somewhere at 12, 13, 14. Yet she doesn't question and doubt. She, she questions the logic of it and, and she gets an answer that she's going to conceive by the Holy Spirit. But at the end there in verse 38, and this is the, the lesson to learn from Mary. Mary responded to all this news about, about Messiah, about the saviour of the world, about Jesus. And this is what Advent's all about, the coming of Messiah. She listens, she listens to all this news about that she's going to give birth to the King of Israel. And Mary responds, saying, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And she responds basically in faith. She responds completely trusting. A child-like faith. Perhaps because she was a child, because she was so young. She'd not gone through the, the, ma the massive disappointments of life, the things that often cause us to become hard and, and cynical and disappointed. But she just responds in, in a kind of, trust and faith and acceptance that God wants from his people she goes in later in the chapter to sing a song of praise which just shows the gratitude and, and the humility of her as well so as we read through these these advent stories there's so much so much to learn from these different characters Joseph too similarly accepts the word of the Lord not not a, not a particular religious man or a learned man similar like like Mary not, not learned, she's young, but she responds in faith and that's what God wants. You know, and God has amazing promises for us. This was an amazing promise for, for Mary. She was favoured. We too, as, as, as Christians, we're favoured. We, we have amazing promises in God. Sometimes God just wants us, every time, God wants us just to accept, believe, take it at what his word or what he says to us and for us. I hope that's encouraging and I hope that we can be a bit more like Mary today as we, re as we read scripture, as we hear what God says about us and for us, that we would accept it and not doubt, not question. God bless you.